Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, October 23rd. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're watching a couple of storms in the Atlantic right now. Uh, Hurricane Epsilon is up here to the northeast of Bermuda. I have not been making videos on this. This came up just to the east of the island, bringing a brief period of rough weather to Bermuda, and this is now turning to the east over the North Atlantic, where it could become a strong non-tropical cyclone and eventually impact Europe in several days, but it is not expected to be a threat to Canada while it remains a hurricane in the short term. We're also watching a new disturbance developing down in the Western Caribbean labeled Invest 95L. If it becomes a tropical depression or storm, it will acquire the name Zeta. If we look at the close up satellite floater loop here, this is Grand Cayman, Jamaica here, Cuba on the north side and the Yucatan Peninsula on the left side. And we can see a clump of thunderstorms to the south of Grand Cayman. And if you look at the clouds to the north and west of that, we have easterly flow in the low levels here and west-northwest flow to uh, the south of that. And this indicates that we have rotation near or just west of Grand Cayman where an area of low pressure has developed in here. An ASCAT pass earlier today found south wind underneath these clouds, which we can't see here, but the satellite could see it, indicating that we do have a closed circulation. However, it remains fairly weak and loose, and one way we can tell that is there's a lack of spiral banding here. We might be starting to see just some hints of it on the south side, but there's not really a lot of banding in here, and this indicates that there's not a strong wind maximum near the center of circulation. And basically what this tells you is the circulation is still broad and loose flow, weakly rotating, not strongly rotating yet. And so for the moment, the NHC has decided not to call this a tropical depression, but it will likely become one if organizational trends continue. And if the circulation strengthens just a little bit more, we likely will have a tropical depression or storm, perhaps as soon as later this evening or overnight tonight, depending on how things go. If we look at the radar picture from Grand Cayman, We'll see a similar thing on visible in the sense that we have easterly flow to the north, curling around to westerly flow to the south, and the low level center is likely located somewhere near or just northwest of Grand Cayman, which is at the center of this picture. Uh, if you look down toward the south with this, where this area of convection is, you will see rotation here as well. This is a mid-level rotation, and the mid-level center has been to the south of Grand Cayman all day. The surface circulation has generally been northwest of Grand Cayman, and earlier in the day it was farther up here. It has since come a little bit closer to the island as far as I can tell, and it's possible that it's getting dragged a little bit closer to the mid-level circulation. And when these storms are weak like this, you often watch for a little bit of some reformation or reformation of the surface low closer to the convection where these mid-level lows are. And so it's possible that this gets dragged farther south by tomorrow. And that will become very important, you know, where it re where it forms or wobbles around during the next couple of days near Grand Cayman, as that will determine what it gets steered by during the next couple of days. If you look at the GFS Ensemble low-level wind for Saturday afternoon, we'll see that uh, the low is expected to be to the west of where it is now by Saturday afternoon. It's currently about here. GFS has it drifting westward. And you can see that the steering flow here consists of strong trade winds that then curve northward across Cuba out of the south. And exactly where 95L is on Saturday and Sunday will matter quite a bit because if it's farther to the west as it is here on the GFS, it's going to be stuck between this northerly flow to its west and the southerly flow to its east. And it doesn't really go anywhere. It kind of meanders in the Western Caribbean for another day or two after that. But if it's located a little bit closer to Grand Cayman, closer to where it is today, then it might get whisked northward more quickly by this steering flow and perhaps get closer to or cross Cuba on Sunday. And then the track changes after that. This also gets more complicated if we look at the mid-level flow aloft, because on Saturday and Sunday, we're gonna have this shortwave trough in the mid-levels over Alabama that's coming eastward, and this is inducing a southwesterly flow over Florida and the Florida Straits. Now, exactly where 95L is at this point could be anywhere within this ellipse here. If it's more on the northern side of this ellipse, then it could possibly get picked up by this mid-level flow over the Florida Straits and get lifted across Cuba and to take a track that's more toward the Western Bahamas and South Florida region. 
If it's farther south, though, it's likely to linger for a while and not go anywhere quickly. And as this shortwave trough moves to the east, things will quickly change once we get into the early part of next week because we're going to have a ridge over Mexico that begins building out to the east and replacing this trough. So if we go through Sunday, you're going to see this ridge come across and by Monday, we have a ridge centered all the way over east of Florida. So all of a sudden, our shortwave trough has been replaced by a ridge, and if 95L has lingered south of Cuba for that length of time, suddenly now it's not getting dragged northeastward anymore. Instead, it's getting pushed west-northwestward out into the Gulf of Mexico by the flow around this ridge. So the steering could change very quickly for this storm, and exactly where it is in a couple of days will matter a lot for its eventual track. If it's fast, it could get up all the way into the Bahamas and South Florida, and then perhaps when that ridge comes along, then it has to turn toward the left, perhaps over Florida or over the Bahamas or maybe over the Florida Straits, say. Tracks like this become possible. But if it's a slower moving storm and doesn't reach Cuba by the time we reach Monday, then it's still going to be down here. And then a track more generally toward the northwest and into the Gulf or maybe even over the Yucatan is possible. It really depends on where it is as we get through the weekend. And while it's still a loose, broad system like this, we're not exactly sure where it's going to end up. It's not moving a lot right now. Whether it's more on the north side or the south side in a couple of days will matter tremendously. If we look at the uh, forecasts from the models, we'll see some of the differences that arise because the models have different takes on what's gonna happen here. Now, this is the GFS showing the loose area of rotation this evening. And as we go forward during the next couple of days, you can see it kind of drifts west and on Sunday, it, it starts to try to approach Western Cuba, but it's not getting north very quickly. And so what we'll see here is that this gives time for the ridge to build northeast of Florida, and it starts to turn left. And this ends up moving very close to the northern Yucatan Peninsula, and it's not very strong here either. And it's worth keeping in mind that this will also play a role in the track. A weak storm is more likely to go toward the west with a low-level flow than a stronger storm, which would be more likely to cross Cuba earlier. So weaker, farther west on the GFS, and we see this getting out into the Gulf as really not even a storm here on the model by Tuesday. If you look at the European model, we'll see something sort of similar. We have a broad low on Saturday morning, and by Sunday, it starts to get stretched out a little bit, and we have a part that gets drawn north of Cuba, so a little different from the GFS there, and it starts to consolidate uh, close to Key West, or just west of there, on Monday morning, but it's really kind of an elongated, disorganized thing. And then this uh, gets pushed west as that ridge builds in east of Florida. So you can see how wherever it is, by Monday night and Tuesday, it will turn left because of that ridge, wherever it happens to be. But we have some different models as well, like the H-Wharf. And this model has a slightly stronger storm by the time we get to Saturday and Sunday. So if you look here, let me just show you, by uh, Sunday morning, we have a robust tropical storm that's a little stronger and it's a little farther north. The GFS and Euro are still way down here in the Caribbean as a weaker system. The H-Wharf is farther to the northeast. Now, if it's positioned here on Sunday morning, farther north position means it's more likely to get caught by that trough in that southwesterly flow, and it ends up crossing Cuba. It's also stronger, which makes it more likely to feel that flow. And so on Sunday, on this particular model, it crosses Cuba instead, and unlike the other two models I showed you, it's fast enough that it does this in a way that gets it up toward the Bahamas and South Florida. And so now we're talking about a storm that might try to turn left here in the vicinity of South Florida and bring rain and uh, potentially wind impacts to this region if it gets up here like the H-Wharf claims. So you can see there's a lot of different takes from these models and they all depend on exactly where the storm's going to be in this region come Sunday. If it's closer to Cuba and maybe a little stronger, maybe it crosses Cuba first before turning toward the left. Maybe that occurs near Florida. Maybe it occurs west of the Keys. But either way, it's something that might need to be watched for impacts to South Florida and the Keys in the Western Bahamas. If, however, it drifts west or it's weaker, then perhaps it avoids the Florida area altogether and either moves up into the Gulf of Mexico, at which point we'll talk about potential impacts to the Gulf Coast down the line, or it moves over the Yucatan Peninsula as a, a weak 
uh, storm. And if it moves west, it's likely to be weak uh, because we have a lot of dry air out to the west that's likely to get entrained in. And we can see this on the GFS here. If we actually look at the moisture field on the model, you'll see this happen where uh, by Saturday, if the storm is in here, we have a strong west-northwest flow with brown colors indicating dry air. And this dry punch is really coming to hit this in the face. Whatever storm is here, weak or not, uh, whether it's over Cuba or farther southwest, it's going to have this dry air to possibly contend with. And uh, it's also going to have some stretching uh, to combat because we have the, the flow curving like this in almost a smiley face type of shape to the north. And then we have air flowing into it out of the south. All this curvature indicates that it's trying to stretch things out toward the northeast. And if the storm is weak, like it is here on the GFS, you can see that some of this green moisture kind of gets strung out. So even if the storm itself doesn't cross Cuba, some of that moisture might. And that stretching or deformation, as we call it, can actually destroy weak systems. So like here on the GFS, it just gets overcome by this dry air and the, the moisture gets strung out and the storm never develops. But if we have a slightly stronger storm by Sunday, then it might be robust enough to survive uh, that stretching. So it all depends on what happens during the next day or two. So if you look at the uh, overall uh, satellite view here, a lot of uncertainty that we just talked about in both the track and the intensity of this developing storm. And it is still possible that this doesn't become a storm at all, but that, that chance seems to be dwindling given that we do see a closed circulation already with thunderstorm activity. And it seems likely that this will be a tropical depression or storm at some point during the next couple of days. And models are playing a little bit of catch up here. They haven't expected a storm to form. So the fact that we have one suggests that some of these weaker solutions like the GFS and Euro, which really don't show a bona fide tropical storm, seem a little bit less likely. And some of the solutions that have a storm in place are likely uh, going to be closer to reality here. We're likely to see a storm in the Northwest Caribbean uh, during the weekend. And assuming we get one, where it is by Sunday will play a determining role in exactly what happens. If we have something a little closer to Cuba by Sunday, maybe it's able to cross Cuba and bring impacts to the Western Bahamas and South Florida prior to moving out over the Gulf of Mexico. But if it's farther south or west, it may get delayed in its uh, movement toward the north, and we could see something that's only an impact to Cuba and perhaps northeastern Mexico along with the Cayman Islands during the next few days. And then once it gets out in the Gulf of Mexico, We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. There's too much uncertainty in the short term through, say, Monday to say with any confidence what could happen beyond that point. For the moment, we're going to see if we have a storm on Sunday and exactly where it is in this region of the Western Caribbean. At that point, we'll probably have a lot more answers to some of these questions. It's just one of those things where it's uh, loose, disorganized, and in a weak steering pattern, so it's not going anywhere quickly. That's a recipe for a little bit of low confidence here in the early going. For the moment, it's not spinning up super quickly and likely to be mostly a rainmaker for the Northwest Caribbean islands, perhaps Northeastern Mexico as well. And if it starts moving north over the next couple of days, perhaps spreading some rain up into the Florida Straits and South Florida too. So that's gonna be the primary thing to watch for as we head into early next week. If we have a strengthening storm that produces other hazards as well, we'll certainly know it. It's moving slowly, so we'll have plenty of time to track this as it starts to gradually move north into next week. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.